welcome us to Glastonbury. You're the first person to introduce us to the people of Glastonbury and what Glastonbury is all about, which is wonderful. He never quite looked after his chest and he never quite looked after himself. So we decided one Christmas, no it was earlier than that, one, one autumn. autumn, that um, sleeping on the land was not good for his chest because he had terrible pneumonia at the time. So I think after a few beers and um, a few cigarettes and <laughs> a lot of persuasion, we offered him an annex down the bottom of our garden which for most people would be inhab in uninhabitable. uninhabitable, thank you, um, because there was no heating in it. But for Paul, it was just the absolute perfect place to hide away for the winter and keep dry and keep warm. Yeah, that's quite probably most people's view of Paul as being uh, a social animal out in the high street, chatting to everybody. He actually liked to get away from that and be entirely on his own, which is why he liked being down here in the annex. He could lock the gate, sit outside with Radio 4, a beer and a cigarette and just be on his own and the same when he was uh, in the summertime when he'd leave here. Well, I think um, Paul didn't want people to know too much about him. I think uh, of the hundreds of people who knew him in Glastonbury, everyone has a slightly different story. Um, that, could be, that could be just down to people talking to each other, uh, uh, Chinese whispers, but I think also Paul had a bit of a joke in all of that and actually told yes. lots of people slightly different stories. It depended on how he was feeling and what he felt like at the time and how he knew the people, I think. But he certainly liked um, an element of reinventing himself in Glastonbury and not necessarily bringing his past with him. Well, actually, when we, when we first came here, he had the bike. Yeah. And we, would see the, we would see the bike around town. Um, but that usually meant he'd come in from a fair way out. If, he, if the bike was in town, Paul was staying a fair way out of town on the levels. Um, for the last couple of years, the bike's been off the road. Uh, he's desperately been trying to get back on the road so he could travel a bit further away from Glastonbury and have a bit of a break from it. Um, but it's one of his props. And usually, uh, walking around town, we can find either the bike or, or, actually, <laughs> or the easel. Or the bag with the easel. <laughs> long before we found Paul, but we knew he'd be around. He'd be around. Whenever he was, it would be. So just sit yourself in a cafe and Paul would find you then. So. Yes. He was, a, he was a very proud man, um, and he loved his independence. Uh, he had, he objected to the notion of just living off the state. Mm -hmm. But he loved to paint. I mean, it wasn't just a career. He actually loved to paint. Um, and and he's very good at it. He's very, very good at it. And he's probably the only, only artist I've ever known who could make a living out of painting. Yes. Um, albeit, yeah. <laughs> just. By most people's standards, <laughs> a, yeah, a relatively poor one. But he could still, he could survive by painting. And he's probably the only, only artist I know who can do that. So I would say very successful yeah, in that. Um, everybody loves his paintings. I've never yet met another artist who doesn't enjoy Paul's paintings. And an artist who was able to welcome anyone that came to talk to him about his work and his paintings um, and just have that ability to talk to everybody. Yes. It, doesn't, it wouldn't matter who they were. They could be in a suit, they could be um, in Anything. a pair of pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have just spoken to them and had a lovely conversation. He probably owed a few people a tenner here and there as well. But that's another story. Yeah. Oh, the one I always, will always remember Paul for is coming down for breakfast in the morning to set the kitchen up. And you could look out the kitchen window and you would see Paul just through the shrubbery sitting. And you'd know Radio 4 would be blaring out um, fairly loud so that you could hear it from the back door. And he'd have a cigarette in one hand and, uh, well, cup of tea, cup of tea or a, <laughs> maybe a beer. Um, and he'd just be sitting gently watching and watching the daylight, watching the weather, watching the birds, watching the wildlife, and just enjoying that moment of calm before he went out onto the streets. 
my most favourite memories is quite a recent one, Paul. And we had uh, we just finished doing breakfast for a lot of people that morning, and there was, there was a fair bit of toast left over. Um, Paul yeah. appeared uh, <laughs> for something I can't remember what, and said, uh, "Oh, toast? Anyone having that?" I said, "No, Paul. Paul, you have the toast. Have you got any butter?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul got butter. I don't suppose you've got any marmalade. <laughs> so. We gave him marmalade and half the jar disappeared. <laughs> and, uh, and that I had, was on just two pieces of toast. Well, it's probably more than that, actually. You know, <laughs> quite a taste and I, I, I didn't realise he had this thing about marmalade. Mm, loved it. So we got him some marmalade just a few days before he died, probably just a couple of days before he died. Mm. And when we were uh, clearing out his stuff, the marmalade was nearly all gone. <laughs> so he obviously had something about marmalade, didn't yes. he? Yes, uh, proper marmalade. Pro it had to be proper marmalade, oh yes. He had standards. He had standards, definitely. <laughs> it couldn't be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it couldn't be cheap stuff. No. No. Uh, those moments, actually, uh, first thing in the morning, looking out the kitchen window and not seeing him moving about at the end. Late at night, sitting outside uh, the back door, not hearing the radio fall going. Comedy oh. hour. Comedy, uh, comedy yeah, half comedy hour at half, half past six. six. You could uh, always guarantee. It's those, just those moments of, not, of knowing he's not about. lovely man, just very gentle, uh, always had a sore throat of some sort or another because he lived out on the street. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, had, uh, chatting to him about art and, uh, and philosophy, all sorts of things in the pub. Uh, he, was, uh, he was always uh, accepting of a pint but uh, never, never scrounging. And, uh, just a lovely gentle man, really, really um, took uh, part in things in, in Glastonbury and really just tied people together in a way that very, very few people had ever been able to in this town. He is a gentleman of the road, um, not, uh, as I said, not scrounging, uh, able, to, uh, able to hold a conversation. Uh, I gather his background was as, a, as an art teacher. Um, able to hold a conversation and really able to engage with anyone and everyone. It uh, didn't really matter who you were, and, and he had a smile for everybody. So, if that's the definition of a gentleman, then that's enough. One of the uh, best things about Paul was that uh, although he chose to live on the street, he didn't live on the state. Um, he chose to disappear from his former life. We gather his, uh, his family are, are based in the eastern part of the country. Um, he came here and refused to joined the system in any way. So he wasn't claiming benefit, he was literally living on the street and living off it, um, living through his paintings and uh, we've got one of them uh, of the Cat and Cauldron. Yeah, in the, uh, in the painting it's uh, myself and the, and the dogs and uh, Julia in one of her very bright uh, shirts on the front door and that's Liz actually hanging out of the window like a madame uh, at the top and the two boys in the corner and that is actually our shop very largely, it's a double fronted or triple fronted shop and um, Paul painted many of the shops in town, that's what he was best known for, the shops and the, uh, the pubs all have a painting of, of his actually hanging on their own walls and uh, as I said there's some talk of, uh, of an exhibition of those. Paul's journey in this life wasn't an easy one. He chose uh, a, a life on the road and uh, in the end that's pretty much what finished him. He's left behind a legacy of some wonderful paintings and uh, we'll all miss him and uh, I would just like to wish him well on the next part of his journey. I know he's feeling he's over my shoulder right now thinking what a laugh it is to, uh, to be celebrated in this way and he's like many artists of course uh, they're only really appreciated once they've gone. And that's really pretty much all I need to say about Paul. Did we fly to the moon too soon? Did we spawn to the chance? In the rush of the race, the reason we chase is a lost in